This is the Sanyo CP28WF1. It is a 28 inch or 66 centimeter pure flat widescreen CRT. It debuted in the year 2000 and something. If you search this model number on the internet, you'll find forum posts dated in the year 2008. So it could very well be a very, very late model. It has the unusual distinction of having both a SCART socket and component input. And I can verify that the SCART input accepts RGB as the satin is displaying right now. Looking more closely, we can see a hatch on the front, which has a set of inputs with a headphone jack, composite video, left, right audio, some controls on the front, the typical affair, status lights, infrared receiver, power on and off. Looking around at the side, we see this silver gray streak and the black, black rear casing. There's our model sticker made in Indonesia. No multi volty 220 to 240. Serial number, power cable, hardwired. And there's the all important connections. The SCART, the S video below it, component input, and what appears to be monitor out and RF in. And also a hook to hang your power cable over when you carry it around. Look at this, will you? Grimy and filthy. I'd say it's come out of a tobacco smoking home. The outside was pretty dirty and the inside is no exception. Here's our neck board with a lot of bodginess on the back. Some last minute add-ons of some big sloppy glue there. Not particularly tidy. The chassis is... There it is, going to be upside down on the edge of the PCB. It says FB1B chassis, Sanyo. I have a service manual. It's easily found online, specifically for the Australian model. Samsung Tube W66, made in Hungary. Not sure if I've seen one made in Hungary before. It's been a long time, if it is the case. When the TV is first powered on, perhaps because the internal battery's flat, or the RF channels are simply not tuned in, the AI of the TV wants to take over. Now I am searching all the programs, no. I don't care for you to tune the stuff in, just press menu and you can get around that. Here's the matching Sanyo remote. Sanyo used this one on many models, takes two double A's. As far as the television's menu system's concerned, sound with those adjustments there, Picture, skin tone's an interesting one, not sure what that does. Setting, what's our setting do? Timer, that enables component input, or I think maybe just composite or S-video, we'll have to test that. And child lock. Let's fire up a console. We are obviously in widescreen mode here on the Sega Saturn. Again, this is all at default right now, and it's very, very rich in color, too rich for my liking. There's a number of different widescreen options. Zoom 14.9, Zoom 16.9, heaps of different. There's our four by three. Again, the color is just way too rich for my liking picture. In fact, that's on natural, dynamics even brighter, game a little bit duller, but the point is, I'll go to personal, and from practice before I turn the color down, this is one of those RGB televisions that you can adjust the color, you can go all the way to zero and get it in black and white, let's put it down to 25 for now. Knights is a game on the Sega Saturn that has a widescreen mode. As to how actually true that is, is perhaps debatable. In the options, there's a TV screen adjustment option for normal or widescreen. I've never really noticed any difference, but I did some research on it. And it does actually include a wider field of play compared to the 4.3 mode. 
Although when you play it on a 4x3 television, you can still put it in wide mode and get that extra width of display in any case. So I don't really know how significant or substantial this widescreen mode really is, but given that the game is supposed to support it, why not try it in widescreen on this widescreen television? Picture's actually not looking too bad at the moment. It's had a lot of time to warm up. Looking not too bad. When I first turned it on and saw the snow around the edges of the screen, very, very blurry on the outer limits. We'll need to get up a grid pattern to have a closer look at that because it was very blurry to start. A light gun test with Hokkaido on Saturn. Don't know if it's got a calibration option, but I'm straight into the game. And it seems to work all right. You don't muck around with Hokkaido. He is a killer. He is the mechanical violator. Gun's working well. No 100 hertz shenanigans here. Very good. This pattern is being generated by the pattern generator via component video. The image was moving a little bit left and right periodically with the consoles, just jittering away a little bit subtly. It's doing that now. I think a little few zigzags through the vertical lines. Fair bit of misconvergence in the corners, in all four corners. The vertical bars get quite thick out here compared to the middle bars. Not immensely different, but with that misconvergence, with a bit of blurriness out in the corners, it's quite noticeable. Not really acceptable. Not really acceptable, but that's what we're working with. Finally, we're on to the PlayStation 2 via component. The fantasy zone looking nice and vibrant there, I must say. The colour's looking nice. Let's get into a game to do 240p, 480i, 480p and so forth. I'd probably dial, dial the colours back a bit there. But it's nice and vibrant. 480i, 240p, yep, a bit more stable, looking good. I don't expect 480p to work. No, no surprise there. No progressive scan support, but that's okay. On the positive side, it has a rare combination of SCART RGB and component 480i and 576i. Quite rare to have those two. In addition, having light gun compatibility. Probably its biggest disadvantage in this particular specimen was the blurred corners, the misconvergence. Certainly an interesting combination of features. I would tread with caution, but if you were to see one on a nature strip or you had opportunity to get one, it'd probably be worth taking up and checking it out because if it was running in better order than this one, if electronically yours was sound, it probably would not be a bad television at all. So I'm not gonna write it off. I'm gonna say, just tread cautiously with reservation, but even looking at this image now, it does look quite vibrant and nice. So it's not too bad of a television. This one's certainly better than the NEC 80 centimeter I reviewed from last week. All in all, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Stay tuned, there's plenty more to come.